Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Studying deep spiritual matters require the people of the Most High to step out of the flesh that is contaminating their thinking in every aspect of their life. Israelites, you cannot analyze what is spiritual with a carnal mind. If you want to comprehend the Most High, you must renew your mind. The word of the Most High said, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When you renew your mind, you will be able to discern what is good in the will of the Most High. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The scripture said, when you renew your mind, that is how you will be able to understand the Most High and to discern the perfect will of the Most High. If you continue with the program mind that you obtain from the B system, you will never be free and you will never be able to see the most high. Going deep requires you to step outside of the box. If you wish to stay in the box the synagogue of Satan has prepared for you, the truth the most high is revealing to the remnant via his spirit will never set you free. The scripture said the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Israelites, you will never find truth in the beast culture. Satan is a deceiver, a hater of all things good according to the scriptures. You will never find the Most High if you're searching for him in the flesh. Satan and his host is holding your mind hostage in the beast system. You must learn how to cast down the wicked imaginations, the workers of iniquity insert into your mind via television, the news, social media, music, religious doctrines, and the many other avenues the synagogue of Satan used to keep your mind in bondage. If you don't hold on to every thought that is obedient to the Most High, you will never escape the traps set up for you in the beast culture. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. A person that is seeking the Most High and growing spiritually is not looking to start fights and debates, but pursuing the Most High's perfect peace as well as glorifying the Most High in all of his and her ways. A lot of Israelites are losing sight of the purpose of the awakening. They are making the awakening about them instead of the Most High. The awakening is about repentance as well as a personal relationship with the Most High. As we follow the Most High through His Holy Spirit that is guiding His people, additionally deepening our spiritual roots, the Most High will help His people to get out of darkness into His marvelous light. The way the Most High want His people to serve Him is in the Spirit and in truth. Too many Israelites are tampering with the truth of the Most High's words, with demonic doctrines to justify the flesh. But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Passing around demonic doctrines to explain the truth of the Most High's words is not serving the Most High, especially not in truth. Israelites, until you get the truth part of the journey, you will never be free. 
Satan can continue to manipulate whoever and the people of the Most High will never get past drinking milk. If you wish to continue to drink milk, Satan's religious institutions will gladly misguide you and keep you from the truth. However, if you want to grow spiritually and establish a personal relationship with the Most High, you must graduate to eating solid food. Eating solid food caused you to encounter new and more wicked devils. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, but hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. The time has come for the people of the Most High to graduate to eating solid food. The behind the scenes series is rooted in solid food. Eating solid food requires a person to expand their mind. If you're not going to do the work that is required to elevate you on your spiritual journey, you are wasting your time trying to comprehend what is spiritual with a flesh-based mind. A fleshly mind can never discern what is spiritual. Until you comprehend this, confusion will plague your life. Remember, the Most High is not the author of confusion. Confusion comes from the kingdom of darkness. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. The scripture said the Most High is the author of peace. Too many Israelites are operating in the awakening without the Most High's peace. That is why Satan is leading many into chaos, gossiping, division, and hating their own kind. You will never find the Most High's peace operating in that manner. The scripture said the flesh and spirit are at war with each other. The flesh crave what is contrary to the spirit. This I say then, Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You can't be on a journey to greatness with the Most High and still operate in the flesh. When you operate in the flesh, that is how you become deceived by the kingdom of darkness. Israelites, if you're ever going to understand the Most High, you must comprehend spirit. The scripture said the Most High is spirit. If the Most High is spirit, the people he made in his image and likeness are also spirit. The awakening is supposed to help the people of the Most High understand the spiritual aspect of life. When the indigenous black people lost what the scriptures call a bright nature, they lost the Most High's light. Then God the Lord said unto Adam, When thou was under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee, and for that reason couldst thou see things afar off. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. When I talk about the indigenous black people living in an altered state, some people had a hard time comprehending that we live in an altered reality. Why is it difficult for the indigenous black people to understand that they are extraordinary beings? Although we triumphant over the other species of mankind in this fleshly body, this body of flesh can't compare to the body Adam and Eve had in the garden. You are made in the image and likeness of the Most High. Let that sink into your mind for a few minutes. If you weren't extraordinary beings, the serpent seed wouldn't spend their entire existence keeping you from reaching your greatest potential. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. Only Adam and Eve can explain the difference between living in our true nature and living in an earthly body. As their descendants, we only know the flesh body that has the potential to do extraordinary things. The Most High never intended for the people he made in his image and similitude to live the way they do today. The Most High intended for his creation to dwell in the garden. If you are not living the way you are designed to live, then you are living in an altered state. When Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, the bright nature or the Most High's light was removed from the indigenous black people, causing them to live in a miserable state. The Most High cursed the ground that has become the home to the indigenous black people until the end comes and the righteous receive salvation. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The people that are created in the image of the Most High are now living a mediocre life that is far from what they were created to live. Thorns and thistles is what the ground produces for the indigenous black people, while the other species of mankind profit from what the ground produced and from the labor of black people. I am not sure why the Israelites and indigenous black people don't understand that they are altered beings. The Most High through the awakening is revealing his people's true nature. However, the indigenous black people live in the beast system for so long that they can't accept the truth that comes from the spirit. They rather believe flesh. The fleshly body we obtain in our mother's womb is not the same body our father Adam and mother Eve had when they dwell in the garden. Adam and Eve's beginning did not start in a woman's womb. The Most High made them with his bare hands, Adam first and Eve after. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Enoch calls the Most High the Lord of Spirits in the book of Enoch. When the Most High created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, they were spirit beings. Remember, Israelites, your spirit is the real you. We are more spiritual than flesh. Once Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree, the scripture said they knew they were naked and went to cover themselves. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Prior to them eating from the forbidden tree, they did not know they were naked. Adam and Eve was living in their natural state as spirit beings. The way the Most High intended for the man and woman to live forever in the garden. The scriptures said they were naked and were not ashamed. Adam and Eve were not over-sexualized like this generation. The scriptures made it known that they didn't know they were naked until they ate from the tree. Once they sinned, they gained an eye of the flesh. They were able to see their bodies in a different perspective. That is when they discovered they were naked. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And Adam said to Eve, Look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven, praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become a flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. Let me try to make this as plainly as I possibly can. In the spirit realm, your dream life, you never see your spirit. The only time you see yourself is when the Most High is revealing a situation concerning your life or Satan is trying to deceive you into forging a covenant. When Satan tried to deceive you, most of the time the atmosphere is dark, the spirits surrounding you are clothed in black garments, and you would be dressed in black as well. In order for you to visually see yourself, your human suit is what appeared to you to indicate that is you. Majority of the time, you don't see your spirit in the spirit realm. Let me break it down a little further. Sometimes when I dream, I am looking at myself interacting with other spirits in the spirit realm. For example, you are looking at yourself driving a car. If you're the one driving the car, how are you observing yourself drive the car? 
That is actually your spirit. The real you is watching your flesh body that symbolizes you driving the car. Your spirit that is observing your earthly body drive the car is invisible. Another example. I observed myself in the dream taking from a man a Bible he was handing to me. My spirit was observing myself take the Bible from the man who reached out to give me a Bible. I hope these examples can further your understanding. Your spirit can do a lot of things your earthly body can't do. The spirit realm revealed these information to you. If you've been paying attention to your dream life or if you recall a dream, majority of the time you don't see your spirit. Even though you are alive and interacting in the spirit realm, if you ever see yourself, you see your human suit that identify you in the physical realm. There are times you are interacting with spirits in the spirit realm and you can't see them. Although your spirit is interacting with the spirit and you know where they are, but you can't see them. Unclean spirits take on the likeness of animals or people you know in the spirit realm to help you identify the spirit. Unclean spirits are disembodied spirits. They attach themselves to a person to carry out their will in that person's life. These spirits do not have a body of their own. They live in a person and refer to that person as their house. The man in the tomb is a good example that I can share with you. He had legions of spirits dwelling in him. The book of Matthew revealed to us what happens when an unclean spirit goes out of a person. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The unclean spirits can attach themselves to a person, but they don't have a body of their own. That is why they are disembodied spirits. The spirit realm, your dream life, can help you differentiate between your living spirit and the flesh body you have to operate outside of the garden. There are many tribes on the African continent that live in the nude. During Adam and Eve's time, they were not over-sexualized like this current generation. Keep in mind the human population was not as numerous as it is today. Adam and Eve are the first human beings. They had to learn their new environment and body on their journey outside of the garden. Just as we don't know everything at birth, as we get older, we mature and discover new things. In order for a spirit to obtain a human body, they must pass through a woman's womb. In order for Yahshua to dwell among us, he had to be born from a woman to obtain a human suit. Now this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, is God with us. The body Adam and Eve had in a garden is what we refer to as the spirit. A spirit can see other spirit as well as the heavens that surrounds them. That is why Adam lamented about not being able to see the spirits that surround him after him and Eve were kicked out of the garden. Adam said he could hear the spirits that surrounds him, but he could no longer see them. O oh, spirits who wait upon God, look upon me and upon my being unable to see you. For when I was in my former bright nature, then I could see you. I sang praises as you do, and my heart was far above you. But now that I have transgressed, that bright nature is gone from me, and I am come to this miserable state. And now am I come to this, that I cannot see you, and you do not serve me as you were wont. For I am become animal flesh. After the fall, their spirit is now clothed in a human body, a human body that is suitable for this earth. When a person die and transition to the afterlife, they don't take their human body with them. Their human body remains here, buried in a coffin, while the spirit that makes the body living goes to the afterlife. If your human body was required for the afterlife, you would have taken your earthly body with you to the afterlife. Instead, your human body remains here, deteriorating, returning to dust. 
Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Adam revealed that before he lost the bright nature, he would praise the Most High just as the spirits that wait upon the Most High does. Adam revealed that his heart was far above theirs. Additionally, he said that the spirits don't serve him as they once did. The book of Adam and Eve revealed that they knew they were altered beings that can no longer dwell in the garden because what their altered body needed to survive is no longer found in the garden. The kind of food and water they needed was on earth. Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. And they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off and that they could not enter it. For that now their bodies had strange functions and all flesh that required food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. Israelites, it is important to know about every aspect of your life, your divine nature, and the flesh body that you temporarily reside in. The food that nourishes your spirit is not the same food that nourishes your human body. The book of Adam and Eve revealed to us that the kind of food their altered body needed to survive could no longer be found in the garden. The food they had in the garden was made for the spirit. The Most High said to Adam and Eve, you are free to eat from every tree from the garden except the forbidden tree. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The scriptures revealed that when they ate from the tree, their eyes were opened. The scriptures didn't say their stomach was full. The forbidden tree wasn't a tree with food that replenished the flesh, but the spirit. That is why when they eat from the tree, they obtain knowledge. The kind of food that nourishes your spirit is not the same food that nourishes your earthly body. The scriptures said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Most High. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. The word of the Most High is the food that nourishes your spirit. That is why so many people are perishing because their spirit is malnourished. They feed their earthly body but neglect their spirit. Your spirit is nourished by the word, praying, fasting, and submitting to the Most High. When you fast, your spirit is close to the Most High and you are more in tune with your divine nature. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, their body did not require them to eat or drink water. Although it was made available to them, it was not required for their spirit. O oh Adam, when thou was in my garden, thou knewest neither eating nor drinking, neither faintness nor suffering, neither leanness of flesh nor change, neither did sleep depart from thy eyes. But since thou transgressed and camest into this strange land, all these trials are come upon thee. If Adam and Eve drank from the waters in the garden, depending on what river of water they drank from, does certain things. For example, the book of Adam and Eve revealed if they would have washed themselves from the rivers that is north of the garden, the waters had the ability to cleanse them and cause them to forget their sins. The same was said about the trees in the Garden of Eden. The Bible said if they would have eaten from the tree of life, they would have lived forever. Therefore, the Most High sent them out of the garden. The Most High sent them to live west of the garden of Eden. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. The food in the garden nourishes your spirit and has the ability to cleanse you and increase your knowledge. Remember when Yahshua said to the Samaritan woman at the well, If you drink from this water, you will thirst again. But if you drink from the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. The flesh is in a constant state of need, while your spirit is designed to live forever and crave spiritual things like the word of the Most High. 
Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Today, the body we obtain from our mother's womb require water and food. It also needs rest. That is why we sleep. When we sleep, our body is recovering and doing a lot of things to give us the energy we need to operate the next day. Our fleshy body needs physical food to eat. Without it, we become malnourished. In addition, our earthly body is plagued with infirmities. When we read the word of the Most High, it brings us closer to the Most High. It gives us wisdom and understanding that we need to draw closer to the Most High. In addition, the word of the Most High reveals truth. The word nourishes our spirit and also sanctify us. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The food the Most High said to Adam you can freely eat in the garden is not the same food our physical body eat. If it was the same, Adam and Eve would not come to the realization that what they need for their altered body is not found in the garden. Remember, the language of the Most High is symbols. What the Most High calls food is not the same food that feed our flesh. For example, the Most High used the phrase milk and honey in the scriptures to speak about abundance, wealth, and to describe the promised land. In the flesh, milk and honey doesn't describe good land and prosperity, but food. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Earlier in the message, I said the time has come for the people of the Most High graduate to eating solid food. Most Israelites on this channel understand what I mean when I said eating solid food. The food symbolized wisdom and maturity. The scriptures use the terminology milk and meat to describe a person's maturity level. The behind the scenes series is for the people of the Most High who wants to go deeper to uncover not only the hidden things, but to get to the root of the many issues that plague our lives. When you go deeper, it increases your knowledge and give you a different perspective. When I said the behind the scenes series is about eating solid food, the food I speak of is the food that feeds your divine self, your spirit. Solid food symbolizes maturity in the scriptures. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Israelites, it is important to read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit. Only depend on the Most High to give you understanding. The scriptures are sealed. Also, the synagogue of Satan has altered the scriptures. The only way you'll be able to discern the truth from the lies, the Spirit of the Most High must guide you into all truth. When the Holy Spirit is leading you in your studies, you will gain a better understanding of the scriptures. When the people of the Most High obtain the correct interpretation of the scriptures, they will not pass around doctrines of devils that is misleading the people and causing them to find the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Israelites, knowing your bloodline and identity is important. However, knowing about your divine nature is even more important. As you heard in the scriptures, reaching maturity indicates you can discern between good and evil. We are living in an environment that is full of darkness. As a people, we have to discern between good and evil as well as the truth. Religion teaches that the righteous would obtain a glorious body to dwell in heaven. The glorious body they speak of is the same body Adam and Eve had in the garden before the fall. If the earthly body, the flesh, was suitable for eternity, there wouldn't be a need for a new glorious body. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Israelites and indigenous black people that are made in the image of the Most High, you are more than flesh. 
The way we are operating in the physical realm is below our greatest potential. When we had the bright nature or light of the Most High, we had an eye that could see into the heavens and see the angels that surround us. When our ways please the Most High, we can pray like Elijah petitioned, asking the Most High to open the eyes of his servant to see his army. Today, we consider what the Most High did for Elijah's servant a miracle. However, if we didn't live in an altered state, we could see the army of the Most High naturally. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The eye of the flesh is a downgrade to the eyes we had when the light of the Most High was with us. Now we have to believe that the army of the Most High is with us. The Most High can do great works through his people. We may not be able to see the angels in the heavens in our current state, know that we entertain angels unawares. If you're looking forward to having the Most High's bright nature restored, make sure you are living a life that is pleasing to the Most High. Repentance is key. Guard your heart and submit to the Most High. Do not let Satan deceive you with the lust of the flesh. Satan wants you to love the flesh because in the flesh he can rule over you. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. The Most High wants to restore his people to their divine nature. The Most High is giving all of Adam's descendants the opportunity to be restored. We will never be complete in operating in our very best until we are redeemed. The righteous have a lot to look forward to. As of right now, our reality is altered. Despite of it all, the Most High can and will restore all of the righteous. Israelites, trust the Most High with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? <laughs>